Hey you, question. Have you ever thought about a cool idea for some product or maybe a tune to a new song only to discover it's already been invented or written? You haven't? Well, you're a lucky man because in today's day and age, it seems that everything has been invented, every song sung, and every thought transcribed. Because of this, is there really such thing as an original thought anymore? No, you say? Well, good for you, you're right. The idea that everything worth writing has been written is beautifully described in the short story The Library of Babel by Jorge Luis Borges. In this story, the main character describes this mysterious universe where he lives. A universe that instead of housing stars, planets, galaxies, and the void of space, consists of a seemingly unending library. But not just any library, a library that contains every possible combination of letters that can fit into a 410-page book. So anything that can ever be written exists in this library. You may have heard the phrase, a monkey at a typewriter eventually writes Shakespeare. But you may not be familiar with the phrase, a monkey at a typewriter for eternity will eventually write every possible work of literature known to man. I personally enjoy that phrase more. In fact, it's why I have it on a plaque in my room just above my bed. This means that everything that can be written is located somewhere in this library. Think of it. Every single book that has or has yet to be written in every single language. From the description of your birth to the description of your death to every single fanfiction about every single character in history, along with commentaries on that fanfiction and commentaries on those commentaries. Hidden somewhere in some room on some shelf in some book is the very meaning of life itself. Now, if you were to find yourself in this library and wanted to peruse and find one of these great truths and you picked up a random book off the shelf, odds are the only thing you will see is page after page of gibberish. Random letters, spaces, periods, and commas creating an incoherent mess. This is the great irony of the library. Though the amount of legible, coherent literature in the library is vast and extensive, it is infinitesimally small compared to the amount of books without any comprehensible story or plot. You can spend your entire life searching book after book for a single page of actual dialogue, but will never come across more than a lone word or two. The main character of this story acknowledges the fact that in a world where everything is written, nothing is original by stating, the methodical task of writing distracts me from the present state of men. The certitude that everything has been written negates us or turns us into phantoms. This is just all a story though, I mean, it's not like there's actually a catalog of every combination of letters out in the world, right? <laughs> or is there? In an age where you can find pretty much everything on the internet, the acclaimed Joe Nathan Basil created a digital version of this library. Now Vsauce is a great video or part of a video where they explain how the website works, but in essence, you can digitally navigate to specific rooms, walls, shelves, books, and pages to find every combination of letters known to man. Somewhere in this virtual database are the lyrics to the next hit song, the winning lotto numbers this week, and an in-depth description of how you are going to die. Searching for these truths, though, randomly, are just as futile as if you were in the actual library physically, because every book and page that I've looked at randomly is just pure and utter chaos, as one would expect. But not only does this site make everything in the written word unoriginal, because it's already been written, it provides the same format for pictures, a gallery composed of random images generated with each individual pixel assigned a random color. If you give a monkey a paintbrush, eventually he'll paint the Mona Lisa. If you give him eternity with a paintbrush, he will create every possible work of art. Here's a description from the site on how it works. Instead of letters and punctuation marks, the image archives permute the 4096 colors and rather than a page of 40 lines, each with 80 characters, the images are pixel grids with 416 rows and 640 columns. Now, if you didn't understand all the number stuff, don't worry about it. Just listen to this next part. It contains every image that has or ever has been or could be created with this color palette in these dimensions, including portraits of every person who ever lived at every moment in their life digitized versions of every work of art ever created, even those lost to history, as well as every work of art which ever could be created in the photographs of your own birth, wedding, and funeral. 
Mark Twain also shared this belief that there's no such thing as an original thought. He once said, the kernel, the soul. Let us go further and say the substance, the bulk, the actual and valuable material of all human utterances is plagiarism. That is how I assume he talks. He suggests that every thought, idea, or opinion, or phrase we conjure up are no more than a collage of things that we've heard or read from other people. For substantially all ideas are secondhand, consciously and unconsciously drawn from a million outside sources. So is this true? Are we no more than just parrots who alter and repeat things just told to us? Is our entire species in a never-ending game of telephone with one thing being told, changed, and repeated one to another? Yes, you say? Well, too bad, you're wrong. The truth is, some of the greatest and most influential pieces of art and literature were inspired by something else. If a car is created out of spare parts from other cars and it runs perfectly, how is it any different than a car made from new fabricated parts? If you didn't get the analogy, let me compare it to this video itself. If this entire video is just a mashup of different past conversations, phrases, quotes that I've heard before, but you still understand as the viewer the message I'm trying to relay, how is it different than if every idea I posted in this video was original? And who says that originality is a defining point of authenticity anyway? Think of one of the most used phrases in human history. I love you. Just because someone has said it before, does that make it any less real when I say it to someone? Just because I have loved someone before, does that make you a copycat for loving someone too? One may make the point that the phrases and language that we use may be nothing more than tools handed down to us by others but they are tools that we use to make pure, authentic, and original thoughts, stories, and art. Hey, thank you so much for, you know, sticking around to the end of this video. I know that this is very different than videos I've made before, but I was thinking of in between, like, videos where I make things, I wanted to create a format that's easy where I can, you know, sort of spew out my thoughts that are more frequent. So this is what I came up with. Please let me know if you enjoyed it, if it was boring. Regardless of what you say, I'll probably still make more of them, but, um... Wow.